On July 30th, 2010, Tegan Marty was excited to visit Extreme World Amusement Park in the heart of the Wisconsin Dells. Even at the young age of 12, she was known by her family and friends as a thrill seeker. Her mum even referred to her as my adventure kid. But adventure would suddenly turn into a nightmare as Tegan's parents would bear witness to a tragic and avoidable accident that would leave all their lives irretrievably altered. This horrific event was one that should and could have been easily avoided. It's hard to imagine not only what Tegan went through, but also the people who witnessed what happened. You can't unsee that. Anyway, before we dive in, I want to let you know that I make videos weekly, so if you want to see my next one, please drop the video a like and subscribe if you are new. It really helps me out. Thank you. Tegan's day began with the excitement that accompanies any visit to an amusement park. The anticipation of thrilling rides, laughter and the promise of unforgettable moments. The air was filled with the sounds of cheerful chatter, the delighted screams of other park goers and the distant melodies of carousel music. A straight A student who earned a spot on the National Junior Honor Society, Tegan had begged her family to make the journey from Florida so that she could experience what was advertised as heart-thumping, thrilling rides galore after seeing the park advertised on television. With her parents by her side, Tegan navigated through the vibrant crowds, her eyes wide with wonder as she took in the colourful sights of the amusement park. The scent of candy floss and the distant hum of roller coasters created an atmosphere of joy and adventure. The mood was one of carefree enjoyment, promising excitement and exhilaration for those who dared to experience the extreme rides the park was named for. One ride in particular that caught Tegan's eye was the Terminal Velocity Attraction. The ride, a suspended catch-air device, lifted riders to the top of four raised towers, where the harness was unhooked for a ten-story back-first freefall, ending with the rider landing in a net 40 feet above the ground. The Terminal Velocity Ride was supposed to operate with precision, involving two attendants coordinating the release of the riders, one stationed on the ground and the other at the top. There were three different safety steps the top side operator would need to take before releasing the rider, ensuring total safety. Meanwhile, the operator at the bottom would deploy airbags, which would suspend the all-important net. The thrill of the ride was essentially the experience of a hundred foot free fall without bungee cords or parachutes. As Tegan approached the terminal velocity attraction, her curiosity mingled with a sense of anticipation. The towering structure loomed above. This was one of the biggest attractions of the theme park. Tegan had been looking forward to trying it all day. The mechanical hum of riders being lifted into the air and the occasional scream of them free falling at terminal velocity added an electric energy to the atmosphere. Tegan, like any other adventurous young person, eagerly joined the line. Her parents watched a few people ride the drop, taking comfort in the professional and well-organized operation. They even signed a waiver allowing Tegan to ride despite the fact she didn't meet the age criteria. The climb to the top of the platform with its panoramic view of the park below only heightened the thrill for young Tegan, who had been looking forward to this moment for months. As she reached the peak, the vast expanse of the amusement park unfolded before her, a breathtaking moment before the exhilarating descent. Tegan's mum, Julia, 
sat at the bottom of the ride with her husband, Dr. Alex Marty, anxious but confident that their little girl was safe. Julie even recognized the operator as someone who had appeared on television, speaking about how safe terminal velocity was, even though participants were dropped from more than 100 feet in the air. It was this very television appearance that had prompted young Tegan to beg with her parents for a visit to the park as a reward for her excellent grades. Julie never could have known that she was about to witness an extreme oversight on the part of that very same operator, which would alter the course of Tegan's day and ultimately her life. 33-year-old Charles Carnell had worked in the park since just 16 years old, rising to the position of manager and taking great pride in his work. The two men that happened to accompany Tegan up to the top of the ride say that Carnell bragged about having helped to build the ride and even asked Tegan if she had seen him on television. When she replied that she had, he laughed and said he normally got a bigger reaction when people realized that he had been on television. Carnell was only working that particular ride at that particular moment because its usual operator was busy talking to an insurance adjuster, but he appeared extremely comfortable with the controls as he confidently lifted Tegan and the two men up to the height from which Tegan would eventually drop from. What happened next is difficult for anyone to explain or comprehend. On the ground, a worker was occupied replenishing the airbags responsible for elevating the net into its designated position. Meanwhile, Carnell lowered Tegan through a trap door, leaving her hanging and suspended in a safety harness. Inexplicably, before he was given the all clear, the self-professed dive master pulled the ripcord launching the 12-year-old Tegan towards her fate. Cornell and his defense would later explain that he, and quote, blanked out. The joyous atmosphere shifted to one of horror as the operator, Charles Carnell, faced the realization of a critical mistake. To the horror of Tegan's watchful parents, Tegan hurtled backwards without any safety net to catch her and landed hard on the ground with a chilling thud, completely unaided by the safety net or harness. I saw her fall, said Tegan's mum, Julie. I ran to her. She was bleeding out of her ears, mouth and nose. Her eyes were rolling back in her head and her lips were turning purple and I couldn't feel a pulse. And I said, Tegan, it's mommy, stay with me. Her father, Alex said, at the moment she fell and I heard that loud thud, I just assumed she was dead. It was horrific. Alex Marty was a radiologist and immediately began CPR, but he was expecting the worst. Meanwhile, at the top of the ride, Carnell faced a chilling realization. The two riders that were due to follow Tegan say that he started to hit himself in the face repeatedly before turning on his radio to say and quote i have killed a girl it's all my fault and i should go to jail later carnell would tell police i just keep seeing her eyes i see her eyes rolling back in her head witnesses also say he was asking for his pastor over the park radio presumably to beg for forgiveness from god the sounds of laughter and excitement across the park quickly gave way to the urgency of response. The park staff and emergency personnel swiftly coming to Tegan's aid. The once bustling theme park transformed into a scene of crisis as they worked to understand and address the situation. Tegan was rushed by air ambulance to the American Family Children's Hospital where she was treated for swelling in her brain, multiple severe fractures of her spine and pelvis, and lacerations to her liver, spleen, and intestines. 
doctors warned her parents that she would likely end up paralyzed. Her mother, Julie, said that she was just glad that her little girl was still alive. Investigators at the scene found Carnell with his head in his hands, lying against a wall, and arrested him on a first degree reckless injury charge, a felony that carries a 25 year prison sentence. In the days after the horrific incident, park owner Bill Anderson spoke out to defend Carnell, who had previously been in trouble with the law for bad checks and driving offenses. He's been a long time employee, Anderson said. He's part of our family, he's devastated. Anderson advised that he had employed grief counselors for the park, but said there was no further investigation required. Upon release, Carnell continued to work at the park, albeit on other duties. Against all odds, Tegan survived her horrific ordeal, but didn't come out unscathed. For a while, she could only communicate through blinking and didn't understand what had happened to her. She knows there was an accident. Her mother told reporters, she asked me what happened on terminal velocity. I just told her they didn't catch her right. Tegan was forced to completely drop out of school and spend all her time in physical therapy. But thanks to her tenacity and intelligence, she was able to re-enter education only a year behind and learn to walk again in the space of 13 months. She also, alongside her mother, was responsible for raising millions of dollars for the hospital where she was treated for a much needed expansion. Carnell was released without charge due to his blanked out defense. His lawyer said he never intended any harm to happen. It was just human error. It was just a brain freeze, something that we all experience. He had one of those momentary space outs. That's human nature. We all have it while we're driving, while we're talking, while we're sitting here. It's awful. It's terrible. But I don't believe it's criminal. His lawyer said, ultimately, there is a distinction in criminal law between actions that are considered mere carelessness and those that go beyond, leading to criminal liability. In the context of criminal law, the focus is on addressing, correcting, and punishing actions that reflect more than just ordinary carelessness. This distinction is crucial in determining the level of culpability and whether the actions rise to the level of a criminal offense. It was on this basis that Carnell escaped with no charges. The Martys did, however, sue Extreme World winning a settlement of an undisclosed amount. The park was already facing foreclosure, and it seemed that this was the final nail in its coffin. It was bought and reopened by a new owner the following spring, and now operates as an alligator park. Meanwhile, Tegan has returned to her normal life, forever altered by her ordeal, thankfully and perhaps unbelievably alive. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay sane.